Thanks to the Lord for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever This verse taken from the psalm resonates in the hearts and minds of all the Bethany sisters today as we have gathered together in the holy name cathedral of the archdiocese of Mumbai for a thanksgiving eucharistic sacrifice to be offered by his eminence cardinal Oswald Gracious the archbishop of Mumbai Bethany has been flowering forth all these hundred years with the blessings of our ecclesiastical authorities. Today is an occasion for us, the sisters of the little flower of Bethany, to sing the Magnificat along with the Blessed Mother, for the Lord has done great deeds for Bethany and through Bethany. The tiny seed of Bethany planted a hundred years ago at St. Sebastian Church, Bindur, Mangalore, by the servant of God, Monsignor RFC Mascarenas, the former Vicar General of the Diocese of Mangalore, has grown into a sturdy tree, having its branches spread in 25 states and two union territories of India, and eight other countries in the continents of Asia, Europe, and Africa, including one in the Vatican. It is a great joy for Bethany, having a membership of 1,443, including our novices, to serve in 50 dioceses in India and 13 dioceses abroad. With the blessings of the Lord, Bethany has become a powerful apostolic arm of the church, living its charism by engaging in the educational, pastoral, medical, and social apostolates even in Mauritania, in the pro proximity of Sa Sahara Desert. We request the prayers of all the participants of this Eucharist to pray for this Indian congregation that it may bear more fruit in our post-centenary years ahead. On this occasion, we earnestly pray that the servant of God, RFC Mascarenas, may be raised to the honors of the altar. It's indeed a great privilege to have the president of CBCI and an advisor to the Pope, His Eminence, Cardinal Oswald Gracious, to celebrate this centenary Eucharistic sacrifice. On behalf of Superior General Sister Rosaline and entire Bethany family, we thank you, His Eminence, Cardinal Oswald Gracious, for officiating this centenary Thanksgiving Eucharist. During this Eucharistic celebration, we pray for his well-being and the intentions of the Archdiocese of Mumbai. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give him praise and give him praise. Come into with thanksgiving in your heart, your voice is raised, your voice is raised, give glory. He the Lord is 
Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. A hearty welcome to each one of you, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, very special way, the members of the Bethany congregation, Sister Rosalie, the Superior General, the previous Superior General, Wilberta, Sister Jyoti, and uh, all the sisters all over, and all the friends of the Bethanies who are participating in this Eucharist. Uh, as I begin, I, I feel a great sense of regret that I'm not with you in Mangalore to celebrate, as I promised, this uh, Eucharist, but the circumstances, the coronavirus, and many other factors have prevented us from really from being in person. So I'm, I'm offering this Eucharist, Thanksgiving Eucharist, because tomorrow is the real day, 16th of July, uh, the 100 years of the founding by Monsignor Raymond Francis Camillus Mascarenus of your institute. Uh, today, this is a Mass of Thanksgiving. We pray to Our Lady, and with her we sing the Magnificat to God for all the graces poured on the institute, on each of the members, and on so many people through the Institute. Let's begin this Eucharistic sacrifice, putting ourselves in God's presence and asking His forgiveness for our sins. And so humbly we say, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, to my most grievous fall. And therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, may he forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. With great joy in our hearts, excitement, peace, love, we sing to the praises of God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you. We bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Sit it 
chose the Blessed Virgin Mary, foremost among the poor and humble, to be the mother of the Savior, grant we pray that following her example, we may offer you the homage of sincere faith and place in you all the hope of our salvation. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please sit for the readings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. I will recount the steadfast love of the Lord, the praises of the Lord, according to all that the Lord has granted us and the great goodness to the house of Israel that he has granted them according to his compassion, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he said, Surely they are my people, children who will not deal falsely and he became their savior. In all their affliction, he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. The word of the Lord. response to God's word is in the presence of the angels I praise you O Lord in the presence of the angels I praise you O Lord I thank you of my mouth in the presence of the angels I praise you I bow down towards your holy temple our response in the presence of the angels I praise you I will give thanks to your name For your merciful love and your faithfulness You have exalted your name over all On the day I called, you answered me You increased the strength of my soul Our response in the of the angels, I praise you, O Lord. O Lord, kings shall thank you, O Lord, when they hear the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the way of the Lord. How great is the glory of our God. In the presence of the angels, I praise you, O Lord. 
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kindly rise for the gospel. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha. You are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear sister Rose Celine, Superior General of the Bethany Sisters, my dear former generals, Sister Velberta, Sister Jyoti, my dear provincial sisters, 
my dear members of the congregation of the Bethany sisters, my dear friends, friends of Bethany, associates of Bethany, and all brothers and sisters in Jesus. Today is a great occasion for all of us. For me too, as I'm an associate with Bethany a bit in Mumbai, Archdiocese Bombay, and my previous Archdiocese of Agra too, where they were there. And I've seen the good work. And so we, this is an occasion to give thanks to God for all the good work done for a hundred years of this congregation since it was founded. The readings of today's Mass, which we've just heard, are so very appropriate for this occasion. St. Paul speaks of the necessity of prayer, thanksgiving, and that will bring peace in our hearts. The Gospel's passage is particularly appropriate because it speaks Without mentioning the name Bethany, it speaks all about Bethany. Because Jesus comes to this house in Bethany, the village of Bethany of Martha and Mary and Lazarus, and they have a meal over here. And this passage we've heard so very often. I think to understand this passage, we must know the context. Jeez, this is, it's reported in the other evangelists also. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. His last visit to Jerusalem. His apostles think that he's a little foolish to go over there because there is so much hostility towards him. But Jesus was single-mindedly going to, Beth to Bethlehem, to Jerusalem. And there he would face his enemies, he'd be taken to trial. Jesus knew what was waiting for him when he went. He saw the agony in the garden. He saw his own crucifixion. It was an agony for him. You can imagine the mental strain, anxiety, ex and confusion. This was the will of the Father, but so painful. And so Jesus in these circumstances wants a little peace, rest, and to be alone by himself at Bethany. We have Martha who is so excited. Both Martha and Mary and Lazarus love Jesus so very, very much. Martha, her first preoccupation is that uh, he, what a wonderful occasion. I'm sure this family, this holy family in Bethany also knew that there's lots of danger for Jesus. They did not foresee exactly what Jesus saw, but they knew there's danger. And so for Martha, it was important. She therefore wanted to, was concerned of giving him a lavish meal, well prepared, well laid out, to make him as happy as possible. That was her desire. Mary also loved Jesus so much she was so excited. She wanted to talk to him, just to hear for him, to open her heart to him. And Jesus, we said, is there the third protagonist in this scene, all worried, wanting peace. Martha did what she thought was best. Mary thought what, did what she thought was best. But Jesus needed peace. That's why his answer to Martha one thing, you are worried about many things. One thing is necessary. What was necessary for Jesus to have peace? What was necessary for Jesus to have the consolation of the people who loved him? Jesus to have, to know that he was doing the will of the Father, to have an interior peace. It reminds me, all of us, of we all want to be kind each one of us, and very often in our kindness, we do things what we think is good for people, not what they really want, what, what really is doing good to them. 
It's our conception, just like Martha. Martha was very, very well intentioned. She exhausted herself washing the pots and pans and plates and cooking the meal, whatever she cooked, and uh, it was a fishing village, possibly fish, and that was the preoccupation. But Jesus was not interested in the meal, he wanted peace. Mary, also best of intentions, kept him company, which was also a solace. Possibly Jesus wanted only to be alone and silence more than people talking to him. The home of Bethany was a home where there was peace, where Jesus experienced love, where he saw unity, where God was present, where the Spirit was present. Very inspired by the Holy Spirit, very appropriately, inspired by the Holy Spirit, your founder, Monsignor Mascarenius, took the name, gave the name Bethany, inspired to try to make of the congregation Bethany and also to make the congregation members instruments to make Bethany present not only in the convent but also wherever they had their apostolate your apostolate spiritual pastoral educational medical social different parts of the country are all meant really to recreate that atmosphere of Bethany where the Holy Spirit is present, where God is present. God has blessed you with many vocations. Today you have 1,400 members spread over 63 uh, dioceses all over the country, 50 in India and three abroad, really making a big difference in the lives of people. As St. Paul says in the second reading, which we've heard, it's time to thank God. Thank God for all that he has done. My dear sisters, the good that you've achieved, and I've seen the good that you've achieved in my own archdiocese, in the archdiocese of Agra, uh, the good that you've achieved is through the gift of the Holy Spirit, guidance of the Holy Spirit, and God's really blessings continuously on you. The blessings you've brought to people are through God's blessings on you. This is a time to thank God, a thanksgiving Eucharist to God for all the good that. Remember at this moment I invite you to think of all your past superiors. Sister, your present superior general is the tenth superior general, so all the others who have passed away before her and who have really continuously watered this plant nurtured this plant which has grown so very much. At that time when Monsignor Mascarenus started the congregation, it was an attempt, he started with four teachers of his own uh, school in the parish of Bendur where he was, with an attempt to give an, a possibility of people, of young girls wanting, being called to serve Jesus in a community, give them the possibility of an apostolate, guidance for apostolate, all this under the guidance of the Holy Spirit, without doubt. And so we pray for him. And we pray that one day, soon, he'll be raised to the altars himself. We pray for all the sisters in your different congregations. Religious life has got its own challenges. Uh, you know that much more than I do. Community life, the apostolate, the spiritual life, relationship. All this has got to be tackled as God wants it to be. The light of the Holy Spirit, generosity of mind, always as disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today, as we thank God, we pray for good vocations, for more vocations. We pray that the Lord and the Spirit inspires you to see which is the path you should tread in the future. We are in the midst of a pandemic. The pandemic has forced even uh, this mass to be digital, online rather than physical. It's a, the world is transformed. And yet the Holy Spirit is telling us something through this pandemic. The Holy Spirit is telling the religious life, 
what it means to be a disciple of Jesus in this pandemic. We must be open, open to the Spirit, open to God's will, open to what God wants of us. My dear sisters, my dear friends, it's rather clear, and Pope Francis has reminded about us about this over and over again, that we will never go back to the past normal. Our apostolate will have to be changed. We are still in the process of discerning you and I and all of us, but we need to keep our minds and our hearts open. Let us then pray. Let's pray to Saint Martha, and Martha also was a saint. Martha did many good things. If she, if really, if she had not cooked the meal, Jesus would have to go hungry. So she was necessary also, but Mary also was necessary. Pray to Saint Martha, Saint Mary, to teach us how to be disciples of Jesus, and to teach you how your congregation could make of many places Bethany's where there is faith. This family had faith. They recognized in Jesus the very, somehow the presence of God. They didn't know the divinity, recognized the presence of God. This family had hope. Even when her, their brother was dead, Jesus came. They didn't know what would happen, but they went and opened the grave. This family had love. That's why Jesus found comfort in this family. Go, my dear sisters. Create in the different places of your apostolate oasis of faith, hope, and love. Create in the different places that you go families which are disciples, homes of disciples of Jesus. Continue your work. May God bless you. May God continue to give you good vocations. And uh, may you floriat, crescat, futiescat, that is, that is the uh, theme that you've chosen for your centenary. May you flower, may you grow, may you bear much fruit. God bless you. We've heard the word of God, reflected on it in the homily, and let's now make our profession of faith, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. My sisters and brothers, with trust and confidence, in the providential love of our Father in heaven, we place our intentions before him. Our response, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Kindly repeat. Lord, Lord in, your in your mercy, mercy hear and our prayer. prayer. We pray for our Holy Father, the Pope, and all the cardinals and bishops, that they may be blessed abundantly to read the signs of the time and to shepherd the flock entrusted to their care. Our response? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for His Eminence, Cardinal Oswald Gracious, who officiates at this Bethany Centenary Thanksgiving Eucharistic Sacrifice, that he may continue to receive the guidance of the Holy Spirit in discharging his responsible mission as the head of the Archdiocese and President of CBCI, may the Archdiocese 
under the shepherding care of his eminence witness to the whole world true christian faith and charity our response lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for our motherland india battling with various problems especially covid-19 and other issues drastically affecting the poor may the leaders of our country have true wisdom and discernment to govern our country safeguarding the constitutional rights of its citizens our response lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for sister roselin our superior general and all the members of bethany congregation that as a centenary year gift we all may receive the grace to be true handmaids of the lord and to fulfill our vows as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to god we pray for eternal rest to the departed souls of our sisters our response lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray for all the bishops where our sisters serve our collaborators in the mission well wishes benefactors lay bethany associates that they all may be richly blessed for their generosity in service we also pray for the members of our families living and dead for providing us model christian families for our growth in faith our response lord in your mercy hear our prayer we pray that the cause of beatification and canonization of servant of god raymond francis camillus mascarenas may be effectively completed and the servant of god may receive the honors of the altar our response lord in your mercy hear loving god we trust that you walk with us sustain us at all times on our journey of knowing you more closely may we continue to remain faithful to you always we make this prayer through christ our lord Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness with this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness with this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Receive, O Lord, the offerings of our devotion. grant that we who celebrate your son's work of boundless charity may through the example of the blessed virgin mary be confirmed in love of you and of our neighbor we make this prayer through christ our lord
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name on the feast of the Blessed Mary, ever virgin. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, she brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices be praised, joined with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your Son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and you make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, Giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your faith, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, Saint Joseph, her spouse, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people your son has gained for you. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. And there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. My sisters and brothers, we are one family. God is our Father in heaven. So with affection, with faith, and in the spirit of petition, we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, with your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but the faith of your Church and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer you the sign of peace. Christ's peace be with you. Christ. Lamb of God, Lamb of God take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Don't he say the word, my soul shall be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Grant to your church, O Lord, that strengthened by the power of this sacrament, she may eagerly walk in the pathways of the gospel until she reaches the blessed vision of peace, which the Virgin Mary, your lowly handmaid, already enjoys eternally in glory. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. May God, who through the childbearing of the Blessed Virgin Mary, will in his great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessings. May you know always and everywhere the protection of her to whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you, who have devoutly gathered on this day, carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Before the dismissal, uh, once again a very happy feast, happy centenary to each one of you, uh, general, provincial, sisters, uh, all of you have a lovely celebration tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, Bishop Peter Paul Saldana will officiate at the Mass. I think it's at 9 o'clock, they'll tell you. And uh, after that, we'll have a little celebration also. I'll, I'll give a video message. I wish I could be present physically. But God bless you. Thank you for all that you're doing, not only in my diocese of Bombay and Agra, but all over the country, all over the world. Stay faithful to the charism. Work dedicatedly. And 
with, through the intercession of our founder, uh, Monsignor Raymond Francis Camillus Mascarenes, uh, may many graces come to you, and may God willing, he himself be raised to the altar soon. God bless you, happy century, and keep well. The Mass has ended, go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. God bless you. Love is eternal.